This presentation will cover LexisNexis Academic. What you currently see in front of you is the Easy Search page. And the Easy Search page is the default page for LexisNexis Academic. On the default page, you're going to see nine boxes. The first row of boxes, they read in this order, search the news, web news, legal research. The second row of boxes, they read in this order, look up a legal case, get company information, research company reports. And the third and final row, the boxes read in this order, research countries, research people, combined search. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the very first box on the first row, which is search the news. And just so you know, we give you two ways to search the news. You may search by a source type, or you may search by a source title. That by source type in the pull down, <clears throat> what you're going to see are a number of different options. We organize news based on different languages, such as Arabic, Dutch, English, French, German, Italian, and all languages. But we also organize news sources based on different categories. So if you would like to search just broadcast transcripts or just magazines or newspapers. The by source title is a great feature. If you know the name of the publication, the news publication, just start typing the name of that news publication. And as you're typing, the system will be kind enough to do a word search. So I'm typing New York, and as I am typing New York, the system will be kind enough to find all of those sources with New York Times. I'm going to type another publication. And once again, as I am typing, the system will be kind enough to do a word search through our news sources to allow me to know if that particular publication is available. So as you're typing, the system will be doing a word search through the news sources. What I'm going to select is I'm going to select All English News. And at this time, I'm going to type my search terms. And what I'm going to type in parentheses is I'm going to type Obamacare, or I'm going to type Ob Obamacare. And in parentheses, I'm going to put health care. Now, one of the things you need to understand about this box, this widget, is that it's not necessary to use a connector. What the system's going to do is going to default to natural language searching. And by defaulting to natural language searching, the system will be reading that space or those spaces as an implied and connector. That is the reason why I put the phrase healthcare in quotation marks, because I do not want that system to read the space between health and care as an implied and connector, I wanted to read a phrase. So right now I'm telling the system to go look through all English news and bring back documents that mentions Obamacare and health care. I'm going to click on my blue box that reads Go. And I want you to be aware that on the left side you're going to see a great feature called clustering. And what this will allow you to do is to see all the different sources you retrieve your documents from and how many. So I know that I retrieved 158 newspapers. In front of newspapers, I see a box with a plus sign. If I click on that box with the plus sign, this will give me a breakdown of all the different newspapers I retrieved documents from and how many. So I know that I retrieved five documents from the Washington Post four documents from USA Today, three documents from the New York Post. So if I want to see just those five documents from the Washington Post and just the Washington Post, <clears throat> that's a hypertext link. All I have to do is click on that hypertext link, and the system will go out and retrieve those five publications 
from the Washington Post. Well, I'm going to get all of my documents back, and I'm going to open up a document. And I just want you to be aware that your search terms will be in bold and in red. And down at the bottom on the right side, you're going to see a great feature called Hits. What the Hits does is, number one, it will tell us how many times our search terms are mentioned in this document. But more importantly, you see a blue box with one arrow. This will allow me to quickly and easily get to my search terms while I'm in the full text of the document. So if I have a pretty lengthy document, this is a great feature to allow me to quickly and easily to get to my search terms while I'm in the full text of the document. I'm going to go back to the home page, the default page, and now I'm going to search the web news. And one of the things I want you to be aware of when you're searching web news is that you're actually searching the Internet, the web. And once again, you can search by different languages. I'm going to search by English, and I'm going to once again type in Obamacare. And in quotation marks, my health care. Because once again, the system is going to default to natural language searching. And by defaulting to natural language searching, it's reading that space or those spaces as an implied and connector. And I wanted to find health care as a phrase, so I put health care in parentheses. I'm going to go ahead. I'm sorry, I put health care in quotation marks. Please forgive me, health care in quotation marks. I'm going to point and click on my blue box that reads Go. And the system will be actually searching the Internet, the web. And I'm going to click on my first document. And as you will see, it is actually going out to the Internet, to the web, and getting that document for us. I'm going to close this out. I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to my home page, my default page. And now what I'm going to do is search legal research. And this will allow us to search different geographical areas. So if I want to, I can search Asia, European Union, France, international, UK, US. I'm going to do international. And what I'm going to type in my quotation marks is I'm going to type healthcare, space, and in quotation marks, Saudi Arabia. And once again, the system will be reading that space as an implied and, and for it to find healthcare in Saudi Arabia, I put those phrases in quotation marks. I'm going to go ahead and point it, and I'm searching international. Click on my blue box that reads go. And once again, on the left side, we have our clustering. So I want to see the four cases. I'm going to click on the box with the plus sign. And you will see that we retrieve cases from the International Court of Justice Advisory Opinions. I'm going to get those four documents. Open up a document. And you will see in the full text, you see my hits. Saudi Arabia, and healthcare. I'm going to go back to my default page, my home page, and now I'm going to look up a legal case. But be aware that when you look up a legal case, you are searching case law from the United States. You're only searching case law from the United States. And I'm going to look up a case by citation and by parties. I'm going to start with first citation, and I'm going to type in a legal citation. And just so you know, for a legal citation in the United States, you need um, three parts. A legal citation for a case in the United States consists of three parts, and you need all three parts. The first number, that represents the volume. The middle part is the abbreviation for the book. And the third and final part, which is also a number, that is the page. So you need that volume, the abbreviation for the book, and the page. I'm going to click on my blue box that reads Go, and the system will take me right there to the full text of this case, this decision, opinion from the United States. And at the very beginning of your cases, you're going to see a case summary. And the case summary is just that. It is a summary of the case. 
It will give you the procedural history, an overview of the legal facts and the legal issues, and the outcome, the court's decision. So right at the very beginning of your cases, you will see this wonderful case summary. I'm going to go back to my default page. And now I'm going to look up that case by parties, the parties that were involved in the case. And in my first box, I'm going to type Miranda. In the second box, Arizona. So I'm going to be looking in the names of cases and just the names, the parties that were involved in that particular case. I'm going to open up one of my documents, and as you can see, the system went out and it looked in the names of these cases and just the name. I'm back on my default page, and now I'm going to go out and get information on a company. Now, there's something I need for you to understand about this box is that it is searching a separate product from LexisNexis Academic. It's searching a product called Company Dossier. And what's great about Company Dossier is that it covers over 80 million companies, both publicly traded, privately held, domestic, foreign, international. So I can search by a name or I may search by a ticker symbol. I'm going to do name first. And I'm going to simply just type in Sony and click on my blue box, and the system will go out and find all companies with the name Sony or related to Sony. So I'm going to open up my Sony Corporation, and in one click, the system is going to go out and gather all the information it can find on this company for us. It's going to get news information. It's going to get financial information, legal information. Just so we know, Sony Corporation is a publicly traded company. We see the ticker symbol. It is found on the New York Stock Exchange. Here I see information about the stock quotes. And if I wanted to, I can customize this stock information where it says custom charts. This will allow me to customize the stock information. So if I only want to see information for three months, click on three months, click on my get chart, and this will customize that stock information. But I'm going to go back to my overview. And I will see my industry classification code. I also see business description, yearly financial information. Along with, we see the auditor, top executives, board of directors. But what's nice is that on the left side, the system went out and retrieved additional information. And just so you know, with the top executives, if you want to get information on any of these top executives, their names are hypertext links. All you have to do is click on that hypertext link, and you can run a search on that top executive's name. But as I indicated, you have all this great information over here on the left. And what I'm going to do is click on Current News, and this will go out and get any current recent news articles that involve Sony Corporation. And here we see news stories. I'm going to click on executives, and this will go out and give me information on different executives. And once again, if you want to get information on any of those executives, their names, if you click on that name, it will allow you to run a search. I'm going to click on the left. I'm going to click on company hierarchy, and this will give you the company corporate hierarchy, who owns whom, the relationships between companies. And what I want to point out is anytime you see a box with a plus sign, that means you can expand so you can get, to, you can get the true company corporate hierarchy. And if you want to get information on any of these divisions, subsidiaries, joint ventures, they're hypertext links. Just click on the hypertext link, and once again, in one click, the system will go out and gather all the information it can find on that company for you. But at this time, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to click on Financial Overview. 
and this would go out and get any recent financial information, such as the assets of that company, liabilities, income statements. Here we see the liabilities. And if you wanted to, you can download this information to a wonderful Excel spreadsheet. By downloading the information to an Excel spreadsheet, that means you can manipulate the information. You can, you know, do different things with that information. If I want to see recent cases, this will allow me to find recent cases, whether they're U.S. cases, Canadian cases, U.K. cases, so you even have international jurisdictions. And then we also have intellectual property, which would be patents and trademarks. And just so you know, this will give you patent and trademark information from different geographical areas. So you will see we have patents from U.S., European, and Japanese patents, and trademarks. Once again, U.S. trademarks. Now, one of the things that's very nice about company dossier is that in one click, the system is going out and gathering all the information it can find on that company for you. But you as a researcher, you may need to know or want to know where did we retrieve that business description from? Where did we get the yearly financial information from? Underneath the segment or the snippet of information, we tell you the source that we retrieve the information from. If you click on that hypertext link of the source, the system will take you right there to the full text of the document where we retrieve that information from so you can read the entire document for reference. I'm going to go back to my default page. And now what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is over here on the left side, talk about some additional options you have. And I'm going to start first with news. And this will allow me to go out and search different news sources. If I like, I may search all news. I can do my newspapers and wires, web news, TV and radio transcripts, international news, colleges and universities, business and industry. I'm going to do the all news. And one of the things I like to point out with the all news is the all news has a great feature that I like, and that is the capability to limit your search to a type of document. So if you just want to find book reviews, music reviews, interviews, you may do that. But in terms of selecting a source, once again, we have a pull down, and this will once again take our news sources and divide them up by different languages. So once again, all Dutch news, all French news, all Portuguese news, and then different news categories. So if you just want to do um, newspapers, magazines, what I'm going to do is do all German news. And what I'm going to do is a couple of months ago, of course, was the World Cup was going on, and everybody was watching. So in the first box, I'm going to type World Cup. Second box, Germany. Third box, Brazil. And in terms of your date, we can search all available dates, but in our pull down, I can do today's date, date is, date before, date after, date between, and then we give you different date ranges, like previous three months, previous six months. But I want to create my own date range, so I'm going to do that date is between. The little box, which is a calendar, I'm going to click on that box with the calendar, so this way I can create my own date range. And I'm going to go back to March 1st of 2014 this year. And I want to search March 1st to August 31st. And now right now I'm going to be looking in the full text of the document. I'm going to click on search. I'm going to open up one of my documents. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, this document is in German. And one of the things I always tell people is I do not is in German. So I'm going to show you a feature in a few seconds. 
Okay. This document is in German. Sorry for the delay. And I do not speak German. And one of the great features that we have is something called Google Translate. And so this will allow me to translate this document to 70 different languages. So if I want to see this document in English, it is now in English. If I want to see this document in Arabic, it is now in Arabic. So I want you to be aware you have that wonderful Google Translate, which will allow you to take any document, regardless of which language it is in, and translate it to another language. I'm going to go back home. I'm going to go back to my All News. And this time I'm going to search Newspapers. And I'm going to do the same search that I did before. World Cup, Germany, and Brazil. And my date restriction. Once again, I'm going to create my, well, I'm going to select previous six months. So this way, the system will, using one of the um, date ranges that has already been created. Well, one of the great things you can do, instead of looking in the full text of the document, you can look in what we call the headline and lead paragraphs. And the concept is when you're searching the headline, and headline is basically the title, the title of newspapers and magazines and news sources, and the lead paragraph, which is the first one to two lead paragraph, the concept is, if my search terms are mentioned early on, I know it's going to be a more relevant document, more on point, as opposed to my search terms being mentioned at the end of the document. And I want to take this back to English, show original. And here we see our search terms are mentioned early on. So the concept is, is if your search terms are mentioned early in that headline, in that lead paragraph, you know it's going to be a more relevant document, more on point, as opposed to your search terms being mentioned at the end of the document. I'm going to do a new search. And now what I want to search are TV and radio transcripts. We have the actual word-for-word TV and radio transcripts. And what I'm going to search right now is I'm going to select just CNN. And one of the great features that we have is something called at least five occurrences. This will allow you to say a search term must be mentioned five times or more in a document. Concept being, the more often the search term is mentioned in the document, the more relevant the document is, the more important the document is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Saudi Arabia, and I'm going to do a date is, because I want to search an exact date, click on my box, my calendar, and I'm going to go back to August the 1st of this year. So I'm searching only my CNN transcripts and saying Saudi Arabia must be mentioned five times or more, concept being more often, more relevant. And here you will see we have, and I'm going to use my hits, which will allow me to quickly and easily get to my search terms. And once again, my search terms, Saudi Arabia, would be mentioned in bold and in red. And here you will see the word-for-word -word transcripts who said what, what was said. So that at least five is a great feature because if you know that you have a very relevant search term and you want that search term to be mentioned numerous times in your documents, not just once, not just twice, you can say at least five occurrences and it would only be treated those documents where that search term is mentioned five times or more. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select U.S. Legal and I want to point out a feature that we have in U.S. Legal called Landmark Cases. I'm going to click on that hypertext link. And what this will do is take us to a list of just that, Landmark Cases, Landmark U.S. Supreme Court Cases. And just so you know, the cases are organized by topics. So if I want to see case law, U.S. case law, that deals with capital punishment, here are those cases, so if I want to read any of the cases, all I have to do is click on the name, 
and the system would take me right there to the full text of that case. And once again, at the very beginning of that case, I will see that case summary, which is a summary of the case, procedural history, an overview of legal facts and legal issues, and the outcome, what was the court's decision, what was the court's holding. I'm going to do a new search. And this time on the left side, I'm going to click on international companies. And one of the things I want you to be aware of is that we can find a company, create a company list, compare companies, have company profiles, and SEC filings. SEC stands for Security Exchange Commission, which is a government entity in the United States. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the hypertext link that reads Find a Company. And this will allow me to find a company based on different types of information, based on a name and a ticker symbol. And I'm going to do a ticker symbol right now, and I want to show you something. I'm going to type in 1080, click on my Find, and the system will go out and find those companies with that ticker symbol. Now, I want you to keep in mind these two companies because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back to my default page. And we saw that Get Information, that box, if you want to get company information, and I talked about the by name because I typed in Sony. But if you had a ticker symbol, I can type in that same ticker symbol right here, 1080. Click on my blue box that reads Go. And here are those two companies we just saw a few minutes ago. Going to go back to Home back to international companies and that find a company. So if you know the name or a ticker symbol, but also you have additional options. So let's say that I just wanted to say, you know what, I want to specify the type of company. You can. You can search all companies. You can do all public, all private. You have um, all parent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say all public. You can find companies by region or countries, state or province, if you're in the United States or Canada, in cities. I'm going to do a country, and the country I'm going to do is Saudi Arabia. And I'm going to do a city. So this way, I'm going to find all publicly traded companies in Saudi Arabia in a particular city. Click on my find. Now, if you notice, the system actually found 43 companies, but it's given us the top three. I'm going to click on this box that reads View All Companies so I can get a list of all 43 companies. And I'm going to click on Saudi Investment Bank. Click on that hypertext link. And once again, the system will go out and gather all the information it can find. It will get news information, financial information, legal information. And once again, if you want to get information on any of the top executives, their names are hypertext links. And here we have that business description. But I'm going to do a new search. And now what I'm going to do is click on the Create a Company List. Now, and essentially, five seconds ago, I created a company list. I said go out and find all publicly traded companies in a certain country, in a certain city. But what if you wanted to get a little bit more specific and you wanted to put in that the company had to have so many, so many employees, had to be within a particular industry? The Create a Company List will allow you to create a list of companies based on information that is important to you. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to search all private companies. If I wanted to, I can put in sales. I can specify a number of employees. But what I'm going to do is specify an industry. And we give you two different industry classification codes. You have the SIC code, and then you have the North American industry classification, which is that NAICS. But what I'm going to do is do the SIC code, 
And to look through the SIC code, we have two options. Option number one, which is find. Option number two, explore. I'm going to go with my option number one. And I'm going to simply type in gas and click on the find, and the system will go and search the industry classification code and tag all of those industry classification codes with gas in them. Here I'm going to say OK, and this will paste those industry classification codes in the box, and I can make it the primary, the primary, secondary. <clears throat> if I want to, I can search the business description, if I have an executive name, if I know a brand. But what I love is the geographic restrictions. You can find a created list of companies all the way down to, once again, a region, country, state, province, if you're doing the United States, city, postal code, area code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a country, and I'm going to select Saudi Arabia. But if I wanted to do multiple countries, I can with this select multiple. So if I wanted to do, for example, Egypt, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia, I could do that. Click on my red box that reads OK. But what I'm just going to do is just Saudi Arabia. And I'm going to put in a city. And then I'm going to click on my create. And the system will go out and create a list of companies based on that information that is important to you. I'm just going to click on one of the names because, once again, the system will go out and gather all the information it can find on this company for you. So I want you to be aware that you can get information not only on big companies but also smaller privately held companies. I'm going to go back to the default page, and I want you to be aware that we have subject areas. So if you would like to search accounting information, environmental studies, health and medical, government and politics, people, consumer reports. Now one of the things I want you to be aware of is that on this product, we have over 15,000 sources. And we cannot put every single source on a search form. So the box that reads sources on the left side, this is going to be very beneficial. And in terms of searching our sources, we may browse or we may find. I'm going to click on the browse sources. I'm just going to refresh my system for one second. Click on my browse sources. And I'm going to do all countries. So just so you know, you may browse by a publication type, a subject, an industry, area of law. And now, right now, all of these folders represent all countries, all topics. But what I'm going to do, where it says option two, where we have number two, filter by, I'm going to first filter by a region. And what I'm going to do is select Middle East. So now all of the folders represent what we offer for the Middle East. So if I click on News, we will see we have um, Arabic language news, Middle East, and Africa. But if I want to, I can get more specific. If I decided, I can do newspapers. And this would give me all the newspapers. And just so you know, I can pick and choose newspapers that I would like to search at once. And as I am tagging, on the right side, the system is keeping track for me. And if I click on this red box that reads OK Continue, which I'm going to do, this will bring me to our Power Search form. And on the Power Search form, you may search by Terms and Connector or Natural Language Searching. I'm going to do Terms and Connectors. And what I'm going to type in is I'm simply going to do my World Cup. 
So I will be looking through these publications, click on my search, and here we have one document, and it's in Arabic, and once again, I do not speak Arabic, so I can translate using my Google Translate to English. At this time, I want you to be aware of your delivery options. On the right side, you're going to see some wonderful little icons, some pictures. And these are your delivery options. The first one is the printer that will allow you to print your documents to a printer. The second one is a postcard or a letter that will allow you to email. The diskette. The diskette will allow you to download. But what I want to do is talk about the last one, which is a cloud. This will allow you to send information to a cloud. And right now the system currently works with Dropbox and Google Drive. So this will allow you to store information to a cloud. Just click on this cloud. The next one, which is a clipboard with a paper clip, we refer to this as permalinking. This will allow you to create a doable URL, a permanent link. So let's say that you find an article, and you want to share that article with your classmates. Just click on this clipboard with the paper clip, with the paper clip and follow the instructions, and this will allow you to create a persistent um, link. So all you have to do is click on that link, and it would take you right here to the full text of this document. But I'm going to take it back to the original language, which, of course, would be Arabic. What I'm going to do is go back to my sources. And this time I'm going to use the find. And you can use the find if you know the name, a part of the name. So click on on the right my find sources. And this will go out and find all sources where Part of the name is mentioned, so I'm going to select one, and once again, click on my OK Continue, and I'm going to do Terms and Connector, and what I'm going to select is a segment. Down at the bottom, we see Segment, and we did a segment search when I searched that headline and lead, and I said go out there and only look in the headline, which is the title in the lead paragraph, concept being that if the search terms are mentioned early on, we know it's going to be about that particular topic, about that particular subject matter. With this time, I'm going to search just the headline and no other part. And I'm going to type in my iPhone. Oops. Spelling counts. You misspell something. It's going to look for that misspelling. And now I'm going to click on my search. Um, try to find. I want to do one more search. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm simply going to type in. So I'm going to be searching these three publications. And what I'm going to do is search just the headline and no other part of the document for Obama. Click on my search. And here we have those publications. And in the headline and just the headline, and no other part of the document, the system went out and searched Obama. But if I wanted to edit my search, I can look in the full text of these documents, which I'm going to do for my iPhone. And here it went out and it looked in the full text, and it found those publications with iPhone in the name. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.